There's nothing more powerful than the bond of family. It has been quite a remarkable journey, starting from the original film, The Fast and the Furious, which focused on the pursuit of a 10-second car, to the current canon cars and the mind-boggling cliffhangers that keep us on the edge of our seats. If you haven't seen Fast 10 yet, I strongly urge you to disconnect from the internet immediately, watch it, and then come back so we can discuss it together. Let's dive into the details. First and foremost, it's important to note that the 10th installment in the Fast and Furious series and the 11th in the franchise is only part 1. When you have a shared universe, the natural progression is to have a grand finale akin to Avengers Endgame. However, you can't have that without Infinity War. It appears that the bad guy has been defeated, but there's at least one more threat lurking in the shadows. Vin Diesel hinted that the studio asked if the finale could be a trilogy. So, fasten your seatbelts for this 180 miles per hour, four-way drag race down memory lane. Let's start with the most recent developments. Fast 10 pays homage to its roots and features callbacks to Fast 5, which marked the beginning of the heist era in the series. One of the original team members, Vinny, sets up a gig for the crew involving a drug lord's cars, unaware that the real objective is to retrieve a chip containing the locations of the drug lord's stash houses. Chaos ensues when Vinny decides to betray the team and withhold the chip to negotiate Dom's criminal record being expunged. There are kidnappings, rescues, and a surprising alliance with Agent Hobbs, who transitions from trying to arrest Dom's crew to assisting them in stealing Reyes's millions. We now know that Reyes, the antagonist from Fast Five, had a son who inherited his father's vengeful nature. This heist is also where Dom's love interest, Elena, comes into the picture. Initially an unrivaled Rio police officer, Elena becomes enamored with the family and ends up carrying Dom's child, even though Dom believed Letty, his presumed dead true love, was no longer alive. But in this series, death is not always final. Unfortunately, Elena meets her demise when Letty returns from the dead in Fate of the Furious, serving as a pawn for Cypher, the main antagonist. Cypher kills Elena to manipulate Dom, leaving him with their son, whose middle name is Marcos, with the first name left blank for Dom to honor his late friend Brian, portrayed by Paul Walker. But Elena's story doesn't end there. It turns out she has a sister who shares Dom's passion for souped-up dats and Z-cars. Dom encounters her when he returns to the Brazilian street racing scene introduced in Fast Five. We also meet Queenie, the matriarch of the Shaw family, in Fate of the Furious. Dom strikes a deal with her to free her sons, Owen and Deckard, in exchange for assistance in taking down Cypher. Queenie resurfaces again when Dom seeks her help to disappear after being framed for a bombing orchestrated by Cypher. Cypher was behind Owen's pursuit of the nightshade device, capable of causing massive power outages. She also sought the God's Eye chip, a surveillance tool that could locate anyone within minutes. This chip was assigned to Dom's crew by Mr. Nobody, the leader of a secretive organization. Miss Nobody, Tess, steals the chip from the agency to free Letty with Cypher's assistance. And we're not done with the Shaws just yet. When the crew apprehended Owen Shaw, it triggered. Americans were born and raised in the United States, and Han has a knack for drifting. However, he was recruited by Mr. Nobody to protect Elle, the daughter of the Ares Project creator. The Ares Project is a powerful hacking tool capable of accessing the world's arsenal of weapons. When Dom's estranged brother Jacob and his partner Otto came searching for the Ares device, Mr. Nobody and Han stage an attack by Deckard to fake Han's death and keep him and Elle hidden. Eventually, the team unraveled the truth and resurrected Han in the ninth installment. However, Deckard was unaware that Han was still alive, leading to a surprising encounter when Han approached him. Dom blamed Jacob for their father's death, which caused their estrangement. Jacob became a skilled covert operative and teamed up with Otto to steal the Ares device, which the agency in Cypher desired. Eventually, the brothers reconciled, following the series' tradition of former enemies becoming family. Giselle, introduced in the fourth film and bid farewell in the sixth, returns. 
the gods I chip, previously in the agency's possession, ended up with Tess, Mr. Nobody's daughter, and now resides with Dante, Reyes's son. With Mr. Nobody missing, Dante's infiltrator in the agency has taken control and betrayed the crew. Due to Ames's betrayal, some members of the team likely perished in a plane crash caused by Cypher, who teamed up with Letty to escape the agency's black site in Antarctica. They reunited with the seemingly not-dead Giselle, now using the submarine stolen in the eighth movie. Hobbs, whose family was threatened, remains in the picture. The fate of Roman, Tej, Ramsey, and Han after the plane crash is unknown. The series is known for its cliffhangers, where apparent deaths are not always as they seem. The post-credits scene reveals that Hobbs is still alive, mending his working relationship with Vin Diesel. The feud between the two was well known, but it appears they have reconciled. A trilogy has been hinted at, and a possible middle part could be a sequel to Hobbs and Shaw, with both characters teaming up to protect their families from Dante's threats. The return of Giselle indicates an epic, all-hands-on-deck finale reminiscent of Avengers Endgame. Dom's charger has been through numerous rebuilds due to its frequent destruction, akin to the ship of Theseus Paradox. It has endured train collisions, plane drops, and countless replacements.